Hello and thank you for joining the midweek edition of Journalist Hangout. I am Ayodili Uzubakun. Today on the program, Governor Akiri Dolu signs anti-open grazing bill into law, but Mieti Ala demands alternatives and deadline extension as ban takes effect across southern states today. MPA accuses police, military and others of extortion at multiple checkpoints at Apapa as a papa gridlock lingers and later on the show niger state suspend cattle market ban sale of petroleum products in containers i'll be hanging out with babaji nikolade utitoju and olaika oyibili so if you're ready let the hangout start now in an unexpected cabinet reshuffle President Mohamedou Buhari announced the sack of two ministers. They are the Minister of Agriculture, Mohamed Nanono, and that of Pa Saleh Maman. Would the sack usher in a major cabinet reshuffle? Julie, this is unlike President Mohamedou Buhari. When you look at his pattern during the first, um, from 2015 to 2019, even people that died in the course of that administration, it took time for their position to be taken. And it took him just, it left everybody alone. And when it was after that administration, they had to reshuffle the cabinet. Some people made it back. Some people did not make it. But it's not his style to normally sack minister. Something w could have gone wrong. The only God knows um, what really happened. But all we can say is if the president took this decision, because of um, allegations of corruption and all that, all we can demand is that the president should ensure prosecution. Uh, because when people are given um, positions like this, they must see it as an opportunity to serve the people and not simply to serve themselves. So I don't know uh, the reason for this, but I observed that in that speech, the president, um, in the statement, the president promised to make this a continuous exercise. If he can make it a continuous exercise, I'll be very happy. Because out of about 40 ministers, I don't think up to 10 of them are actually working. Optimally. Yes. I don't think up to, up to 10 of them are even active. Some are active because we just see them in the newspapers but not really for doing anything uh, significant. And if you, have, you are faced with such a situation, then you need to, 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 to remove such people, bring in fresh blood. This administration must realize that it has just one month uh, from five months to the next election. So it's not as if they have all the time in the world. So people who have been given opportunity to serve the Nigerian people must give their best, must, must uh, behave like time is not on their side and try their best to make sure. a mark. So um, we want this to continue. You can't you simply appoint ministers and if they are not performing, look away. No, Thank if they are know. not performing, show them the door, let them go. That's the right uh, uh, approach in my view and I'm, I'm happy uh, to hear that this will continue and we will remind the president if he does not continue as he promised we will remind him that you did make a promise that this kind of reshufflement and swapping of ministers will be a continuous exercise mm. Dr. Ibele now look, looking at it you, you want to see, look at what might have um, prompted President Mohamed to single these two people out, um, Minister of Power and Minister of Agriculture? Well, uh, personally, I want to be a little bit uh, skeptical or careful. I don't want to use the word sack. I think the word sack looks very attractive and uh, fine to use, but. Uh, Perhaps, I mean, I would just want to say, maybe they were dropped. You know, in the race to 2023, a lot of this kind of thing will happen. Perhaps the two ministers have their eyes on the house or governorship or whatever. So it's not a, 
it's not a big deal that they were asked to go or because up to now the exact reason why they are leaving has not been explained and uh, the statement itself did not expressly say that they were sacked so i want to be a little bit cautious and uh, just say that well they are out of the cabinet and uh, we wish them all the best in their new endeavor and as baba jide has said if they are being dropped is asked to do with any wrong footing we want to see them being taken care of by the law mm. all right the die is cast and we are with the turnout of events as the deadline for the implementation of the ban on open grazing by the Southern Governors Forum in the region lapsed today. While Governor Ruti Miyakeodolu of Undo State beat the deadline to sign the anti-grazing bill into law in his states, the association of cattle breeders known as Mieti Ala Kotori said it will be unrealistic to enforce the law because there are no alternatives. <laughs> the association demand extension and provision of alternatives. Yes, this is a new side to it. <laughs> after the Lagos meeting, after the uh, Asaba declaration and um, the deadline was given in their last um, Lagos meeting, mm -hmm. and the deadline as at now was uh, September 1st, and it was Governor Ruti Makedulu that actually signed that bill into law. There are some states that uh, they still have the uh, proposal stuck in the House of Assembly, and there are some that don't even propose that bill sent, according to our investigation today, to the State House of Assembly. What we are looking at now is out of the resolution made in the last governor, Southern Governorship meet, um, Governor's meeting, it's only Governor Roti Makere Dolu that's made good. No, it's the not. Problem is it's not the only one. Um, some states have already signed it into before, before now. Yes, mm. yes. Before uh, now, we the know. Governor the just the governor, uh, maybe because of elections and other things, you know, uh, he's been busy, so he's doing it a bit late. But it's on record that uh, even Wiki, Governor Wiki, has. Uh, I signed uh, the it's bill the into law and uh, codify me as well, you know. Uh, so a number of governors have already um, uh, signed the bill. So we await full implementation since the, the deadline they gave was September. Oshun has signed, or you are signed, the kitty has signed, and some of the South South states too have already signed. So. We await a full um, enforcement, full implementation of the law. The law is clear. Um, there is a faction of Mietiala. Unfortunately, uh, because our people like sensationalism, when they are referring to this, they will say Mietiala. Whereas the, uh, the, this counter horror is not the mainstream Mietiala. It's, it's by no means the mainstream Mieti Allah. It is just a faction of Mieti Allah. The faction that makes the loudest noise. That's why people every time they say Mieti Allah. Whereas it's just a faction that we are dealing with here. And it's not the mainstream faction. The bigger uh, the mainstream uh, group of Mieti Allah, they have not said that this thing that they don't believe in this thing or that it cannot work and when they are saying when they are asking for alternatives alternatives is is a great uh, uh, um, uh, lawful grazing not open grazing if you want and it's stipulated in the law if you have you are doing livestock business you apply to the uh, livestock committee of the state you will be permitted to lease a piece of land from someone who is willing to give out his land on lease for the purpose of grazing. Once uh, it's given to you, you are required to fence it. You fence the area. And they will also monitor you to ensure that not everyone can gain access into that place. Then, after that, you will be registered 
for the livestock business that you are doing and and your your animal will be tagged the re your registration number will be on will be tagged on the animal so that for they will know that yes this is your this uh, your animal your uh, livestock if your animals race around town without identification strain like these ones then they are subject to confiscation and public auction at a day to be announced so there are consequences for not obeying this and if you observe a lot of the, some of these states have already even begun enforcing the law i know for example that um Ondo had been enforcing it i know that uh, Oshun had begun enforcing it so to say that there are, there are no alternatives is, is dishonest the alternative is to do ranching do ranching the, the uh, governor of Imo state yes Oku Zodima mm. came out last week to declare that mm. he doesn't have any law in that state called anti grazing law mm. that what he has done is that um, between the headers and the farmers to meet a mutual understanding on how things will work out that he is against the anti grazing law and making the first governor and that's his choice mm. it's just one governor I don't have um, anything to say to his choice. It's his choice. A man is bound by the choices that he makes, you know? <laughs> so if if, if, uh, if that is how he wants it, is the governor of the state until the fresh election, yeah. fine. And he, he clearly thinks that his approach is the best Time will tell whether that approach is the best, but we all know, except those of us who are dishonest, that across the world, livestock breeding has changed. Completely. People don't roam with their cattle freely anymore. And for those who are trying to make this look like a North and South affair, because we try to uh, ethnicize every issue, because we are dishonest people, we had the governor of of, uh, State, on Kassina Sunday. State. Yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. That is the son of a meek seller. His mm. mom was a Fura de Nono seller. The, the story there We've is that also yes, had, he has even signed. <laughs> Ayo. <laughs> We've also had the gov governor Ganduje. Yes. Who mm. is he was a not only bread. not only is he a fuller name man, yeah. he was a header. Mm. Mm. Moving cattle from point to point. Mm. And he's saying look than the Pope. He's saying no. Let us have cattle ranching. Mm. And he has taken steps to make life really bearable for these herders by putting them in that social forest yeah. where they have all that they need. Even their wives will not need to be roaming around whereby some people who are greedy, where they see women, they, they, they get really greedy, will be looking at their wives. Their wives will be localized where they are. So you can't make eyes at their wives because their wives are there with them doing their own business. So who would not prefer that to join in at the risk of cattle uh, rustling, at the risk of being attacked by wild animals going down south? Who would not prefer to stay in the place? Go and see even the cattle. I did the story. I went there even the cattle. Yeah. You saw those that, that they were quite big. You know? Mm. Because they don't have to labor. Even the cattle will pray for you. <laughs> they will pray for you. They say, ah, you are they treating us well. Yes. yes, yes. They have to roam around. <laughs> you know? I don't, I don't know the point that uh, Governor Hope or Dima wants to, but he's saying it that there's no such law. You know, point blank. coming but, to what I want to call the Imo formula, I think the governor is just an individual. If the members of the House of Assembly think otherwise, they can band together and present such a law from the legislative point of view, present such, and if they pass it, and if the governor refuses to sign, mm. they can, they know what to do. Well, they, they, will, they will not do that. Oh, aha. So, what <laughs> I see there is that the governor 
is just an individual. His citizens, they, have they agreed with him that, well, we know how to, we agree with you that uh, this is all right, let us go ahead with it. We, we don't need the law. Because for the law to be there, you need the legislators to agree with their, their, their electorate, mm. even if the governor does not agree. And the Imo formula, just as I said, I, do, I don't know. He, he, he is there on the ground. Perhaps there are some things that mm -hmm. you can see that we cannot see. Yes, yes. But I think that is the problem that we always have. We want to play politics with everything. The business of cattle, in fact, the business, business generally has changed. It's just like, let's take our business, for instance. In, I, 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 I've been a newspaper journalist of my life. The newspaper now, to now say that they will still want to do the business the way it was done in the 70s, mm -hmm. 80s, and early 90s. It, it, it can't work. Yes. So, for him to say that he, 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 he doesn't believe in it, well, we wish him all the best. Yes. And, uh, That's, let all him we can. That's all we can say. In the Jewish, if it's his choice. It may work. Uh, well, we may think it won't work, and it. And then we will come back and say, so, "Oh, we were um, wrong." Let uh, Governor Hope Zodima take the decisions that he thinks is right, uh, the best for his state. It's, uh, he don't have any <laughs> issue with that, you know. But um, some states have already taken the uh, the right step yeah. to to pass this into law. So. And um, we are waiting to see how it gets no, how, do we now, how do we now reconcile this um, anti grazing law position to mm -hmm. the position of um, the presidency? The, uh, the president thinks that those grazing routes are still there. That's what he thinks. But a lot of those grazing routes do not exist anymore. They, <laughs> built, they built houses on oh, them. Oh. Are you going to put you know, down the houses? They built houses on them. You know, when you go to some of these uh, states in the north, if, you, are, if you, are, you have not been to a state for a long time and you go, the changes you see, yeah. even places where you never expected that they will build houses oh, on, mm. Places where they used to have recreation, where they, uh, they used to have polo, uh, play uh, polo and all that. Yeah. They've allocated lands to people and they are building houses on them mm. indiscriminately. So the grazing routes, a lot of those grazing routes are gone. And then the power over land is, is vested in the governors of a state. Yeah. They will take him to court. Okay. It's as simple Let's as that. This call. Um, Aminu is calling us from Yola. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Jide and, and, and your team, good evening. Good evening, Amino. Yeah, um, I want to make a small contribution on this grazing thing. Okay, go ahead, please. Yeah, um, well, first and foremost, I'm a nomad, a header myself, mm. like the Ganguja you mentioned. Yeah. And, um, you know, for everything in life, there are processes. And, 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 and ranching and, and, and whatever, it's, it's a process. You have to first and foremost, these are animals like me and you, they eat and drink. You must first provide water, yeah. provide pasture, and you cannot provide water and pasture in the absence of land. Hmm. You must have a land before the, the, you develop water and pasture. These are animals. So we, we should all understand that this is businesses that need support from government it shouldn't be politicized yeah. it shouldn't be ethnicized whatever name you call it like any other business the, the nigerian header is, is the 80 percent of those in southern nigeria are not there to help they are there to do business these are animals that are taken there for self we are losing half of nigerian nomadics who are moving to central africa now the movement from binoy to taraba to, 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 to Cameroon, to Central Africa. We are losing half of it. Half of our meat is coming from Cameroon, Chad, and Niger. Niger yes. So why, why don't we all agree that these Thank are you, businesses? Amina. 
Thank you. Thank you, much. Aminu. We have to take this break. When we come back, we'll discuss more. Still, so journalist and guards. We'll be right back. Thank you for staying with us. Now, Julie, before we were on a break, and if we we're talking about the federal government and the position of the federal government and this anti grazing law stands of the southern governors, mm. how is it going to work out ultimately? How do you see it working out? The, what I know is that the president made a pronouncement that will be challenged. They've already sent word out there they will challenge what he said in court. You know? They will challenge because the Land Use Act vests power over land in the states. So you can't simply direct that, okay, go and be using this. No, no, no. Those, they, they, they are going to say no. So that the president made the statement does not mean that, oh, it has to happen. It's no. If, even when he came up with the uh, executive order, that in my view, he made no mistake by coming up with it. The governor still challenged it, went to him and told him that he should not gazette it, if not for the uh, workers that went on, on strike, judiciary workers, we will not have autonomy for the uh, judiciary and uh, the legislative uh, the legislature. Mm. So it's not as if because the president said it, uh, then it must happen. The governors will challenge that. They've already said that they will challenge it. And I know that it won't even be one case alone. And such a case will get right up to the, the Supreme Court. A lot of them have even said, no, we have no land to give. Mm. So if they say they have no land to give, what are you going to do? Are you going to put guns to their necks? Yeah. So this is the thing. And in the states, the governors too are interested in ranching. Yeah. If you see the law that Akele Dolu just came up with, it, there is provision for ranching. for ranching. There is enough land for ranching. And wherever there is, then you make arrangement for, uh, for provision of water. Let me tell you something. The elites, our elites, who are the biggest problem of our country, do you know that a lot of them are already, they already have ranches in Nasarawa and other places? Yes. Ranches, ranches, go to, go to uh, uh, Mabila, go to yeah. Mabila and see how they are practicing ranching and see how big their cattle uh, is in Mabila. It, uh, many of these senators that you see, they have ranches in Nasarawa. You know Nasarawa is so big. They have ranches there. They are, they are doing it. Mm -hmm. So w why most people think that it the, cannot work? But mm -hmm. you will see some of them, they will be the ones to make noise because they want to do, use, uh, uh, they want to divide us uh, on virtually every issue. Mm -hmm. You can't second this. Yeah. As we have been saying, this is not the first time we are talking about this. Run, uh, cattle breeding is a personal business. Is is it, it, you you let's look at it this way. In those days, people raised chicken and allowed them to wander about the yes. streets and all that. But now people don't do that again. You buy your feed, you house it, and all that. So why can't we do that for cattle? Why are we still bent on? I insisting that the cattle must be given free range mm -hmm. to enter into people's farm mm -hmm. and do all that. If we eat meat, are we not going to eat food? Is meat going to satisfy the hunger pang that we have? And there are even people who don't even eat meat. So, for me, the president should just forget about this issue of uh, grazing route and all. That is anachronistic. It's completely out of Order. No, nobody t talks about such things again. We, this is the 21st century. People have even suggested that what are we doing with Sambisa and the rest of them? Exactly. That we can't create grazing. We can't create them. grazing. We go to the north, you see big, big uh, local governments that yes. are bigger than some states. Dambua, Dambua local Where government there are forest is, and bigger than, is bigger than four out of five states in in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in the east is there. bigger than Lagos State. Just one they local government. That's enough land. In, hmm. Moving on now, like the proverbial leopard that is incapable of changing its spots, it has been difficult to stop the Nigerian police from indiscriminate mounting of checkpoints. As their proper gridlock in Lagos lingers, authorities of the Nigerian Port Authority, MPA, are blaming congestion at the port on extortion at checkpoint mounted by officers of the Nigerian police and Nigerian Navy. 
Ports operations are one of the major drivers of trade and investment activities across countries. In Nigeria, the prospects of the nation's sea and land ports are beclouded with numerous challenges. Ports congestion, traffic gridlock, decayed infrastructure, poor access roads, bribery and security concerns are some of the basic challenges across the nation's ports. The House Committee on Customs is here interfacing with key actors in the sector with the aim of making the ports competitive. Apart from the cost which is abnormal and triple, there is time consumption which leads to delays, make no sense of the federal government policy of ease of doing business. Avoidable congestion is identified as the major obstacle to economic development in the last six years as the lawmakers seek answers to many questions. Now we need to understand, are you talking about policy issues or procedural issues? That you just get to customer and they tell you that this thing has changed. Because if it is a government policy, you know, government policy sometimes it takes time for you to implement. It is an opportunity for those invited to lay it bare and prefer the way forward. The first problem is the issue of extortion. There are so, multiple... Issue of extortion. Yes, there are multiple checkpoints within what we call the red zone. Shipping companies are constrained by the risk element that accompanies transportation of cargo from the, inland, from the water port to the inland ports. We have a lot of tables to pass through before a single container will come out of the port. For the Nigeria Customs Service, cooperation is key among all actors in the industry. The issue of scanners, everybody is aware of it. The moment the scanners are ready, Nigerian Customs Service will certainly deploy because it's even easier. Where you can examine manually 100 containers, with scanners you can do 1,000 containers. Yeah. As part of the resolution of the interactive meeting, the committee agreed to embark on an oversight of all agencies in the sector to further assess the situation and prefer solutions. The problem of our papa, that problem of congestion, the gridlock, it has been a crisis that is looking as if we can't get it over with or it's not um, something we can find um, a lasting solution to. They've been the presidential tax force on this, they bring the Lagos State took over at a point in time. But we still have this problem persisting and they fingered these security agencies as some of them mounting of this checkpoint have been a problem, this good luck and corruption. Yes. It's surrounded uh, by corruption. Uh, this time, you know, the MPA has come up with all kinds of measures meant to ease traffic, Electronic you know, um, along that corridor meant to make life um, at least bearable for business people um, going inside the port and coming out. Remember, many people used to have houses, even in that area, mm. they've, they've abandoned their houses abandoned to live that, elsewhere. So live that, Papa, because there is no way you can live long I know, if every time you are in, in traffic for five hours, <laughs> every you day. know, every day. How, how can how can your life be long? <laughs> life expectancy for people in, in, uh, living in such areas will be extremely short yeah. and brutish. So, all kinds of ideas, different mm. committees have been set up, presidential committee, let's solve this problem. There was a time I was reading that the call-up system yeah. that they introduced was bearing dividends. And I was so happy I said, God, at last, we appear to have found a solution to this thing. It did not last more than maybe one or two weeks. Mm -hmm. We started hearing that the uh, great law was back again. I said, what is going on? We were just happy to read this report that things had changed. How come now again we are hearing that uh, this, 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 uh, uh, that is not working again? The human factor is a big clock in the wheel of progress in our country. People come up with good ideas to make 
life uh, less difficult for all of us but some individuals because of what they want to gain will just come up with all kinds of uh, schemes to make life difficult for other people now because it's mpa saying it you know if it was this uh, um license custom agents and other yeah. people do business they're mm -hmm. saying it we will say mm, don't mind them don't mind because them. they they are corrupt mm -hmm. and but if it is mpa saying it the landlord then we have to ask ourselves the pertinent questions. Because if MPA does not feel the pinch, MPA will not come out to say, look, these are the people causing all of them. And they are saying, look, that at times you can count in a day 20 to 30 checkpoints within the Tin Can and Papa Corridor. Mm -hmm. And that sometimes area boys will even be collecting bribes on behalf of our uniformed men. It's, it's, it's such a perplexing situation. When will it end? That is the problem. Is this problem still going to outlast this administration? Because they inherited this problem, and I know all oh, the big like that. moves that they made to solve this problem. But are we saying that this thing that has no solution, that it will keep defying every solution thrown at it? I mean, it's, it's, it's just terrible. Hmm. It's just terrible. Alenka, what do you make of this situation? Well, the problem is human. It is not any other thing. We've said it before. Give it to the government. Either at state level or at federal level, there are steps that have been taken to make life easy for citizens. But where we blame the government is that will to punish those who, 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 who bring infractions on the law. For instance, the issue of the call-up system, why did it fail? When it failed, who did you punish? Did you investigate and say this is why it failed? It is the same thing that is happening in all government offices in all everything that government is involved in i made that example some time ago when you want to obtain your driver's license or international passport all the things that needed to be done that are done in everywhere else in the world has been done in nigeria go online pay print your receipt and everything and take it to the office that i've paid this is it and all that but when you get there, they will tell you, no, it's not, uh, it has not dropped, this, this, this. So, why is it that this thing is failing? We must, these are the things, those are the little, little knots that need to be tied. Why did the call-up system fail? Who, who are the people behind it that made it to fail? And what, are the, what is the punishment that has been meted out to them? Because we will not continue to go on like this. I have a neighbor who does business at the Tin Can Port. This, the, what it says happened is that when you complain that uh, when they change uh, the tax force, mm -hmm. that okay, oh, the other tax force has failed, they bring another tax force. In one week, the tax force, that the new one, will work. Exactly. But after some time, some people will have gone to them, ah, oh boy, this is your opportunity to make it, oh, you better use your opportunity. Then they will relax again. Everything will break down, and they will go back to... So it's one big cartel. Exactly. So, it's if it's these people are back. not polished, mm. it will continue to, to happen. And I always tell people, I said, look, government may have its own problem, but we as human beings also have our own problems. Because... We, uh, where the government fails is that issue of punishment. Why is it that people frustrate your system? They are reported, you know them, they are caught, but they are never punished. Mm. They allow them, okay, uh, Olainka has made this thing fail, we deploy him to another department, I bring uh, Ayo. Ayo uh, succeeds in the first one week, he begins to fail, they deploy him again and bring another person. That is the problem. Uh, see, uh, if you don't punish people, it will continue to happen. The, at the meeting, at the Inter-Security Agency meeting yes. uh, that uh, was held last week, 
it was resolved that those illegal checkpoints yeah. will be identified and removed. Now, we want to see them B removed, make good the promise that they made. You promised to identify those illegal checkpoints, checkpoints and remove them. They are saying that policemen whose duty it is to catch vehicles that illegally get into the, the, port. the ports are the same people who escort them straight into <laughs> the port. So how do you deal how with such a situation? It? So our you see that corruption is an enemy of progress and that's why we have to deal with corruption. If we do not get these people, in fact, those who have set up illegal checkpoints, they should arrest them. Yes. We used to have the IG uh, yeah, monitoring, monitoring squad, yeah. the ex squad, and the rest yeah. of them. And they were arresting people in those days during Tafa Balogun's uh, era. Mm. They will come and suddenly arrest you, check your pocket if you have squeeze Naira notes in your pocket or inside your uh, uh, socks. They will, they, will, they will arrest you and take yeah. you away and you are out of the force. We need to begin to do those things. They say even some Tony, of them are wearing in our, in our uniforms and they're starting... Tony is calling us from Apapa. Oh, good. Okay, yes. All right, Hello. go ahead. Hello, sir. Is it journalist and count? Yes, yes. Yes, I am, I am happy to contribute to you. I've been longing to... Okay. I've been longing to get you for Thank you for today's, today's topic. It really affects me. I say it's in Ababa. I'm a great agent. Okay. So, okay. Okay, please. So is it true what okay. we are hearing? The, the, the what? What is causing the dread, dread, dreadlock is customs. One. Because we have about five customs checkpoints on the road. Either you have the CAC squad or you have the uh, the other monetary squad. The the the, uh, the federal pressure squad, all these squads are even parking on the road. Hmm. When any container comes, they stop it there. When they stop it, instead of checking your documents yeah. and allowing you to go, they start checking again, that kind of a thing. And you know these containers have been examined, hmm. released, signed by customs, everything to somebody holds box, release box, somebody holds box on the road. It causes jet lock, uh, that jet lock you're talking about. Then secondly, there are for that congestion inside the port, the main cause of it is there are a lot of a uh, lot of importers are, are not straightforward. What they do, they, they bring in one item, adding another item, but what government should do with the problem we are having? We're supposed to check so long as it's not contraband, they give them DM to pay. But it is happening that they have been doing it. Anything you, if you declare wrongly, they will get with five percent penalty. Then why can they then allow these containers to be examined? The owners will come, some of them that have done that mistakes, will then pay penalties to it and carry the container and go. From there you will see if, will, if, uh, if somebody will just be coming from a papa uh, from Abuja. Say it's a, 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 an operational situation in a Lego. He will come to a papa, he will come to the gun, examine containers, get the things as a problem and leave the container there and go. I think the container. Thank you for your contribution. You could go on and on and on, but yeah, I, I, I even wanted to ask him if indeed there are many illegal police checkpoints, as the MPA guys have said. But I, since it's the MPA, okay, it's yeah, still on. I'll, the professor said it's still on. Uh, hello, can you hear okay. me? Yes, sir. Yes, yeah, since since you work in that area, you are. Uh, a, co a customs a license agent. Yes. Is it d uh, true that there are many pol uh, uniformed men, na naval officers, uh, policemen, police. who are on the road uh, 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 creating checkpoints where they should not be? Is this true? This statement by the MBA, MD, uh, MPA, MD, okay. is it they true? Are, they, are only, they are only in one place, officially. Hmm. They, they are at they are at uh, Ejora, on top of bridge of Ejora. Officially, yes. They are, we, every day they are there. We see the mount themselves there every day as we are coming back, going back. You see them mounting themselves at Ejora, on top of Ejora bridge there. Mm -hmm. But yes, they still say it is. They have their camp boys that they are using to like what the transporters do say. Mm -hmm. 
they don't they trust what us that we give container to uh, to load for us. Normally, say before they will bring container to our papa, there will be problem. Here and here and there, they collect money. But to be sincere, the the, the only stand you see is at on top of the bridge. That's where you see police, a last man. Mm -hmm. All those, they, all those, all the maintenance, all those things, they are there on top of that beach. Thank you for the Thanks. information. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the information. And finally, as the fire on our insecurity mountain continues to burn, Nigerian leaders are running round to find solutions. In a bid to check activities of bandits and kidnapp kidnappers in Niger State, Governor Abuaka Sanibelo has approved the suspension of cattle markets and ban on sale of petroleum products in containers across the states. Jide, how is this related to the insecurity in Kano? This um, Niger. Um, so in Niger, sorry. This uh, suspension of cattle markets yes. and ban. That's what the uh, Governor Masari has done too. Uh, I, see some of the steps that he took are exactly what Governor Masari Did. has done. Uh, Governor Masari has banned the sale of second-hand motorcycles in Charanchi market. He has also said that you cannot on uh, motorcycle carry two, uh, two uh, or more three, persons yeah. because these bandits, when they are going around, there's three of three of them mm -hmm. on the bike, you know. So he's banned them. Then. He, he also closed some roads, some key roads yeah. that through which he knows that they go they uh, they, they go to uh, to attack people and all that. And it's uh, the livestock markets, just like the governor of Niger has He's done. Doing. He too has closed the livestock market because they. He has also said, okay, you cannot um, transport cattle from um, from. Niger to Lagos and all that. These people, these cattle rustlers, once they are denied where they can sell the cattle, because the bandits are largely cattle rustlers. They started with cattle rustling and then moved into kidnapping of people. Yeah. That's how they started. So, and they are still very much active in cattle rustling. They have not given that up. The same people uh, who, who kidnap people in Tegina, they 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 stole cattle. Even on that day, they stole cattle. So, if you deny them where they can even sell the cattle that they steal, you are making life difficult for them. I think that, just as uh, Alwa suggested yesterday, all the governors must take some steps that will enable us to squeeze these guys, squeeze them as much as we mm. can. If we can block the mm. routes through which they go Land to attack loose. our people. Mm. They can keep our people safe. Now, um, is, uh, they also banned selling of uh, petro petrol, petrol yeah. in jerry cans. Mm. Mm. Anytime they attack a community, they set ablaze the, the community. community. They, they always go with plenty of petrol. So, these moves are directed at these bandits. Because they know that this is their mode of operation. They, they, these are directed at them. And yeah. they've targeted so communities enough. where banditry is very active, like uh, Jibia, Basari, Safana, Damusa, Kankara, uh, Sabua, and the rest of them. So we just hope that gradually we'll see the results of, uh, of uh, some of these things. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, if these governors can be working together like this and taking proactive measure in order to, well, you know, stem the activities of these bandits, it will yield food in a, in a matter of time. Yeah, you know, is a is a business that needs to be done coordinatedly. As one state is taking a step, the contiguous states and neighboring states must also do something like that, so that they don't run from one state to the other mm -hmm. and then you have a relief in one state they they spike up in another the important thing for them to do is for these governors to also work together because as we have always said all these states are interlinked it's just like lagos or Gond or your they also the way they also need to work together because their boundary intercross each other from one point to the other. So all these northern governors where this banditry takes place need to 
unite among themselves and make sure that all those roots and the laws that they are passing is the same thing with all of well with little vari uh, with little variations because of their mm. uh, either culture or whatever but it is important for them to work together niger state must should work with casina casina will work with kano and the rest of them so that when and kaduna so that when you block one end it is not that you block this end they run to that place mm. and then continue their business and at the end of the day everything collapses on your head so it is very very important for the governors to cooperate and work together to make sure you know what we one, defeat this you know one of the reasons Baditri returned to Ni to Niger Casina okay okay was because when the governor came up with uh, amnesty, amnesty program yes other governors didn't do it yeah and look at how close Sanfara is to, to Nassim. Nassim. Yes. You are allowing them to operate freely there. And the, the ones here in uh, in, uh, in Casina, they were even catching fellow bandits. Exactly. Mm. So but later on, because they didn't do it, those ones were Those like, ones too, eventually, uh -huh. they came into they uh, Casina and the business continued. So that is the thing. Remember Kano. Kano was the first to come up with amnesty. Yes. That uh, Fagore Forest used to be the home of bandits. Today, you mm. won't find any bandits there anymore. Mm. Because the governor took the step to appeal to the federal government to come and use that place as a military base. So they set up a military training facility inside Fagore. Mm. That was what uh, uh, Ganduja did. And that's the, uh, that, that, after that, no more. No more now people have peace they can move around mm -hmm. i saw uh, our friend uh, the uh, the whip the house of reps whip okay uh, Adodo Gua. okay mm. he said before i can't pass through this place to my my village see, no. and he stopped i was doing my story he even came down to come and greet me yes yes sir. he said the things have changed before mm. i can't pass mm. that there were bandits that place was full of bandits so if you are going to just they will catch you if they cooperate among but themselves they, there are steps that governors can take now, uh, uh, the two governors have said that you cannot ride your bike hmm. from 6 that's p.m. That's, uh, that's no, that's it should have been. If they are calling for ransom, if they are calling for 500 million, yeah. they say you go and bring 20 bikes. Yes. It's part of the demand. No, that is the thing. Uh, they were telling me about uh, one guy that was kidnapped. Hmm. After the family paid 10 million ransom, hmm. they, they refused to release him. They now said, you know, go and buy bring us 10,000 glory charge card ah. and three bikes. <laughs> three right. bikes. So now, we, we, we are now, when you buy the bike for them, you are oiling their yeah, machinery, yeah, the of, the machinery of, of, uh, of their You are crime. oiling it. You are encouraging them. You are strengthening them. That's, That's the mean. thing. It's, it's, it's now That's even it. their way. The students that were kidnapped, they forced the parents to part with yeah. bikes. After paying ransom, go and bring bikes. So bike will be part of the now that they can even be saying people should go and buy a recharge card for them. Mm. It shows how empty and rudderless our system is. Yeah. That exactly. bandits are using, are, are using phone. We can't track are them. We can't catch I mean, them. They even have the effrontery to say go and buy a recharge, buy recharge card, card. or your way through. buy a recharge card. I mean, <laughs> okay. I have Ibrahim from Kaduna. Good evening, my brother. Good evening to your two guests there, especially Baba Jide. I agree to you. I'm able to get it for this evening. That yes, so good evening. I drive to Kaduna. You see, yes, this ranking of the team, I think the, the direction that uh, our governors are taking are very good, hmm. but I could, I, I could have at least make it all this ranking because we could have been an uninclusive. The headman, the farmers mm. and even the governor themselves because can, you cannot always say the farmer, uh, the, 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 the full army and the governor. No, what the big governor? Mm. Farmers also need to be involved because we know it. That will be the way out because all this is for the good for the farmers. And without food, what are we going to be? It's even good for us to have this in a very, con in a very uh, conventional way because there are ways for us to go. 
Ranchis today is no more practicing any part of the world. No. This no. modern practice Reason. will be a way for us. Mm. And the nation is today, please, you should try to involve the farmers as well. That is my Thank you, Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you for your contribution. Thank you for your contribution. I think when on though uh, the Ondo governor had this meeting yeah. on this matter. Mm. Meeti Allah, all of Ondo them, Chanta, they were there. Mm. Uh, I remember that we even interviewed them. Mm. Uh, so I think they are they, they were involved, and increasingly everyone is seeing the need the, for yeah. uh, for the ran like ranching, this. ranching as against open grazing. Oh, oh thank you, Olaika like, uh, mm. for the contribution. Thank you. Thank you, and we'd like to give a special shout out to Bukola Samuel Wemimo. Buki is <laughs> saying Bukis. goodbye, and Buki is someone that released me a <laughs> lot of the program. He's someone that every time we are just new. Every time I am not around, we wish uh, Bukola Samuel Wemimo farewell. Yeah. Best of luck oh. in our future yeah, endeavor. We will, we will still. Remain friends, mm. and um, any time we see you, uh, we will we'll relive the old times. I mean, mm. we part to meet, and we meet to part. Yes. Mm. <laughs> so on that note, I will thank you, Baba Jide Koladi Utitoju. And that's all on Journalist Tangat today. Join us tomorrow for another episode of the program. And don't forget to join us on Journalist Tangat on Sunday from 1.30 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. We're on YouTube, youtube.com slash TVC News Nigeria. I'm Ayodele Uzubak. We'll see you tomorrow. God bless Nigeria.